So, do you know already DBLinter? That's one of the new products we're working on. And uh, it basically gives you linting capabilities while editing. So here I'm in VS Code and you can see here in my PLSQL code, I have like this red thing here. It says, okay, missing character set length. That's one rule. I could click here and see the definition of the rule uh, with more details, etc. But what I, what I can do here is, um, for example, add a quick fix, either add char or byte semantic, but actually it also detected I don't even use this variable, so I might have just removed it. And what I like very much is this one. You see sometimes you just log SQL error message, but you probably want, um, if there's some error, you want to also have the backtrace information with the line numbers, etc. So one click and it, it adds that. And yeah, this is dblinter. You can just install it in VS Code, um, just search for dblinter in the extensions and um, install it and you're ready to go. But I want to actually show you this video is how you can um, configure all these, these rules. Um, so for example, here in this package, you can see I have some, some issues and I don't really agree that these are issues. For example, this one missing start label in sub block. So how can you configure dblinter. For that we have actually a public app. It's called preview.dblinter.app and keep in mind this is currently the preview um, and here you can just create an account. So sign in and then sign up. You have to enter your email address etc. Follow up the process and then you should be ready with your account. Let me quickly log in. I already have one. And then first thing you're going to see here is this get started with VS, VS Code. Click this button and you get a guide on how to set up VS Code. So in the VS Code settings, you just search for dblinter and then um, you need to get the infos for his tenant name, copy it from here. That's your specific one entered here. The username, same copy paste it there. Um, configuration, you probably just have the default one. So also put that in here. And lastly, access token, you can click this link, um, create a new access token and then you could copy it and paste it here. I already have one, so I'm gonna use that one. So perfect, now I am set up. So let's change our configuration to basically disable this rule. Here, G1010, I don't want that. Um, so let's go into here, configuration. As you saw before, there's always a default configuration. You could create multiple ones, but let's configure um, this one. So at first, like there are, you can configure some settings to include or exclude some files, could even create a database connection. I don't have one. So some of the tests run via SQL and then it needs to connect to the database to run these. But the most important thing here is this rules tab. I can also click on here. So we only see this. And here you can see a list of all the rules. You can click also on this link to get a detail and you can change something. First, like you could disable it, but I also first want to show you the other thing. So uh, maybe like, I don't like that it's currently like this red arrow, it's really jumping at me. So you can like change the severity level. So arrow is the most one warning is like the blue or yellow based on your theme. Info is like really subtle and also there's like hint. So let's check out hint. So I just save this. And then I need to go to the dblinter tab here. And here's this refresh thing that is going to get your new configuration. And then you also need to like reopen the package. So it starts a new, linter, uh, new linting um, here. And now you can see here I like this subtle three dots. It's still in here, but it's, it's, it's like not jumping at you. But you can still like in the end just disable it. Another thing is like, um, I have this rule here that checks for namings. So for example, here's a rule constant does not match um, the rule always follow naming conventions for constants. And here's, it's even showing the regular expression that's basically used to check and tells me I should use CO as a prefix. I don't like that, I want to use C. So on the next tab here on parameters, if we search for constant, then we can see this rule here, the, the constant package, and I can modify it. So you can see this is the default value. 
I don't want a default value. I want sometimes, like in some projects, people use GC, global constant, or just C. So with this regex, with a pipe, you can say either that or that is fine. That's probably also perfect if you have like many um, yeah, different styles and different projects. Um, you can still like create different um, configurations for different projects. I missed that bracket here. In the future, we have a function to copy a configuration as a new one. So again, we need to um, go back here, refresh, and then reopen the file. And you can see here, this is now gone. Basically, the file is not, not read anymore. No, no errors here. Um, that's how you can configure it. So in the future, you can basically share uh, configurations with your team members. This will be in the paid edition. So um, if you work on projects with your team, um, you can add people to your tenant basically. And then for example, you can also like, like here in the VS Code settings, there's this user setting. And if you switch to workspace and then for example, enter the details here, um, then you see there's actually like a settings file being created. And that's how you can easily share like the configuration that's being used to apply these rules uh, with your colleagues in your projects. Also, DBLinter will be able to have like a CLI and that you can use, of course, in like build pipelines to give feedback to, for example, GitHub or GitLab or anything else. Um, thanks a lot also to like Philip Salvesburg. We partnered with him. Um, and if you have like some feedback, his company is called Grizzlebuff. He has this public DBLinter repo here. Link is in the description. Uh, here's more info on also the payment model that will be there probably. And here you can create just issues with some feedback. For example, someone already asked for an open VSX extension that also works for like Cursor, Windsurf, etc. Um, that we will provide soon. And yeah, we have many things planned. It's still a preview, but I uh, hope you're interested. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks and have a nice day.